Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming my all-time favorite books video And I know this video is so long overdue and I've been asked to do this video like a million times And I'm sorry. I just never got around to it and I felt very intimidated to like pick my favorite books of all time like it's a lot of pressure you know i didn't know which ones to pick but i've gathered a list of 15 books that are my favorite books of all time and i wanted to share them with you today and before i get started with that i wanted to mention some honorable mentions that are 10 books that aren't in my top 15 but are really close because i love them so dearly but they didn't exactly make it onto my top 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 list so i just want to share them with you now the deal by l kennedy loving mr daniels by Brittany c cherry one true loves by taylor jenkins reed before you were strangers by renee Carlino, Junkie by Cambria Hebert, Atheists Who Kneel and Pray by Taryn Fisher, Heels Overhead by Elsie Springer, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, and Autobiography by Christina Lauren. Those are just some honorable mentions that I really wanted to mention because they are some of my favorite books of all time, but they're just not quite like the top, 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 top faves ever. But let's just jump into my top 15. <laughs> off with number 15 is The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry. It follows this man named Graham Russell who's a best-selling author, meets this girl named Lucy Palmer who has two sisters and she owns a flower shop. I think it's best to go into this book not really knowing anything about it like I did. I was just expecting this to be like your average romance novel and not really much more but holy fucking shit was I wrong. This book is just like everything I want in a new adult romance and more. It just really really hit me so hard with the feels like the emotions were running high. Lucy is just a very optimistic person and she's the complete opposite of Graham and Graham is really negative and pessimistic and he just feels really hopeless a lot. I know that it's like such a cliche but like they balance each other out so freaking well. Brittany C. Cherry's writing is just so freaking gorgeous like you just have to read it for yourself to know. This book is so amazing and it's so special to me. All right, number 14 on my list is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. It follows Lucy and Josh who are both working in an office. Only one of them can get promoted and they're both competing for the same position. This book is just so freaking adorable. It just screams so much cuteness. It's like Rainbow Rowell, but it's more like R-rated. The perfect romantic comedy. Like just picture Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, that amount of cuteness. Like they have that amount of chemistry and it's just so freaking cute. Like I literally, I did picture Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Ha. You gotta get that fixed. Cuteness. So yeah, I love this book so much. It's just one of my favorites ever. It makes me so freaking happy. I want to reread it all the time. Right, number 13 on my list is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allaire Sines. It's also the longest title on this list. <laughs> Follows this boy named Aristotle who spends his summer with Dante and he discovers who he is. And he discovers the secrets of the universe, apparently. <laughs> Aristotle is just very relatable with his age. He's only like 15, I think. And he's just, the way he thinks about things reminds me a lot of the way I thought about things in high school. The struggle of like trying to get ready for your senior year and figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. And just trying to find meaning in everything. Like he's just very relatable in that sense. And he's just struggling to find his identity and struggling to figure out who he is. And it's such a beautiful coming of age story for Aristotle. This book is just written so lyrically and beautifully. Love it. I love it so much. The 12th book on my list is Unteachable by Leah Rader. It is a student teacher romance. It follows this girl named Macy who is 18 years old and her teacher Evan who is like 33 I want to say. I don't really remember to be honest. And he's her film teacher. This book is written so beautifully. Like just the first chapter alone when they're at the carnival together. Just the way it describes the carnival. Falling off a roller coaster free fall is like the same free fall as falling in love. The metaphors in this book freaking kill me me. It's so beautiful. Evan's a film teacher and I love movies. Like I fucking love movies almost as much as I love books and love that he's a film teacher and I love like hearing about movies when I'm reading a book. I love this book so much. Number 11 on my list is Him by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy. It follows two hockey players named Ryan Wesley and Jamie Canning. They both went to this hockey camp together when they were teenagers. They are both playing for their college teams and their teams are going to face off against each other and they haven't seen each other in like four years. Wes is pretty openly gay and Jamie is straight. He's always considered himself to be straight. They both get to like go back to the summer camp that they both went to as teenagers and they get to be coaches now at this hockey camp that they used to go to. Jamie and Wes are just so freaking cute. This was actually the first male male romance I ever read and it's still my favorite male male romance that I've ever read. I just adore Jamie and Wes together so freaking much. They're just uh, 
so cute. I really love hockey, so I loved seeing them play hockey throughout this. Jamie and Wes are still my favorite male male couple of all time. I love them. Tenth book on my list is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. It follows the brother and sister Loken and Maya, and they are brother and sister, but they kind of feel like they act as parents to their three younger siblings. This book does involve incest. It's a, it's a love story between Loken and Maya. Even though it involves something as harsh as like incest, like you hear that word and you're like, oh god. This story is so eye-opening and beautiful and heartbreaking and tragic and like this is one of the saddest books I've ever read in my life. Holy shit, this book just really opened my eyes and kind of I think made me more of an open-minded person. <sighs> I couldn't believe like how broken my heart was after I finished this book. It is so heavy. I still think about it like all the time. Loken just has such a special place in my heart. Number nine on my list is You by Carolyn Kepnes. Follows this guy named Joe Goldberg who's a stalker and he owns a bookstore and he lives in New York. This book is told in second person which is why I think that you is the perfect title because if you know like when a story is told in second person it's saying like you went to the bookstore and then you did this and it's like it does follow Joel Goldberg as a main character but it's like he's observing other people so it's saying like you did this it's like he's watching you as the reader which makes it so creepy and so intense but anyway he meets this girl named Beck and then he just starts stalking her like she just shows up as a customer one day in his bookstore and then he sees her name on her credit card and then he looks her up online and then he just starts stalking her and it just shows how easy it is for somebody to start stalking you online and it re it really makes you aware of like how much of your life you're posting online and how easy it would be for somebody to start stalking you. It's so darkly funny and I know that a lot of people might not think that but I think it's freaking hilarious. Like Joe Goldberg is so funny to me. He's like Dexter. If you like the TV show Dexter, I'm sure you would love this book too. And I just, I love it so much. Joe Goldberg is one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. He's very sinister and dark, but you root for him. He's a stalker and he's crazy and weird, but I loved reading from his perspective. He's hilarious. This book is just so great. It's the best. <laughs> Number eight on my list is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Follows this girl named Natasha who's from Jamaica and she's getting deported from the United States on the day that she meets Daniel who's an Asian boy who is a poet. This book, in my opinion, is insta-love done right. I love how Natasha believes in science and she's a realist, you know, and Daniel is very optimistic and he believes that love at first sight is real and he wants to make her fall in love using science like he wants to prove to her that first that love exists using science and he's just so adorable and this book is just so cute and it's written so well and it all takes place in like one day it's so amazing and it just blew me away number seven on my list is attachments by rainbow rowell it takes place in the 90s follows this guy named lincoln who supervises email because email was like a new thing in the 90s and he falls in love with this girl named beth through her emails to her best friend. He reads the emails that she's sending to her best friend and he like falls in love with her personality. The cutest book. I love this book. It feels like watching like a 90s rom-com and Lincoln is one of my favorite characters because he reminds me a lot of myself. You know, he's very socially awkward. He doesn't know how to talk to people. He's constantly searching for like his purpose in life. I adore the shit out of this book. Number six on my list is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Follows Evelyn Hugo who is a huge Hollywood actress in the 1950s. Now she is seeking out a journalist to write her biography. She was a pretty controversial actress back in her day because she married seven different men. This book is just so shocking and devastating and beautiful. You get to witness Evelyn's entire life and all of her mistakes and regrets and her decisions and everything Evelyn has ever experienced. You get to experience with her. It's so beautiful. Once you realize what's actually happening in this book, it's just so beautiful and heartbreaking and Evelyn is is such an amazing character because she's so flawed and complex and at times I was rooting for her and rooting against her at other times. That's what I like most about this book. It's so real. It's amazing. It's a roller coaster of emotions for sure but holy shit I love this book. Number five on my list. Whew, getting to the top five. I'm so excited. It's Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Another Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh my god back to back. It is about this girl named Hannah. At this party she has to decide whether she wants to go home with her first love Ethan or go back home with her best friend Gabby and call it a night, we get to see this book play out in alternating chapters of 
which decisions she makes. So in one chapter we get to see what would happen if she went home with Ethan and then in the alternating chapter we get to see what would happen if she went home with her best friend and in each chapter it just keeps alternating the worlds and so you get to see how different her life would be depending on which decision she made that one night. And at the time that decision seemed so small and insignificant and it ends up having such a huge impact on her life. It's just so amazing like even talking about this right now just like gives me chills just thinking about it because it's like literally every single decision you make in your life every single second could change the course of your life and you wouldn't even know it and it's like this book really explores that idea about like fate and how maybe some things are just destined to happen to us no matter what and we don't really have control over our own fate it's just so thought-provoking so beautiful it made me cry like a bitch at the end i just i loved it number four on my list is fangirl by rainbow rowell it follows this girl named kath who's in her freshman year of college she is extremely socially awkward and she doesn't know how to talk to people and she writes fan fiction for this fandom called Simon Snow. It's kind of similar to like Harry Potter. It's just really close with her sister and that's like her only friend. I love this book so much because I relate to Kath so much. Easily the most relatable character of all time for me. I've never related to a character as much as I relate to Kath. Honestly reading from her perspective feels like viewing the world through my own eyes and my own opinions. Like she just gets it. She gets it on a whole other level. Kath alone is the reason why this book makes this list every freaking time. It's just such a beautiful coming of age story about coming out of your shell and growing up and going to college and leaving home and moving on with your life. It's just very relatable to me and really really freaking great. I just, I love this book. Number three on my list is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is an adult sci-fi fantasy, which I'm sure you were not expecting from me, you know? <laughs> this book is an epic, epic story that follows this guy named Victor Vale and his best friend Eli Ever, and they're both in college and they're working on their thesis, and they discover that if you come close enough to death, you can become an extraordinary person with, like, superhuman abilities. So basically, you can become a freaking superhero. They both decide to, like, do this experiment on themselves and they both get close enough to death that they become immortal and they develop these like superhuman abilities then something happens between them and they become arch rivals and they are trying to get revenge against each other so they both become these huge like super villains that are going against each other and it's just the most epic book ever 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 really blurs the lines between superheroes and villains and what's right and wrong it just really like you don't know they both have flaws and they both have reasons and it's logical the ending of this book left me so shooketh i was like screaming i couldn't even breathe like the ending is just amazing it's just so well thought out it's so good number two on my list is it ends with us by colleen hoover it follows this girl named lily bloom who lives in boston and she owns this flower shop it kind of follows her romance with this doctor that she meets named Ryle also flashes back to this romance that she had when she was a teenager with this homeless boy named Atlas. The reason why this book is one of my favorites ever 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 is because of Atlas. He's literally one of my favorite characters of all time. I can't even like explain to you how much this book affected me emotionally. I read this book a while ago. I got an arc of it. I didn't know shit about it. I only knew that it took place in Boston. So I just jumped into this knowing absolutely nothing and it just freaking tore my heart out like i was sobbing like this is the book that i've definitely cried the most ever freaking powerful like this book really like hit me in the gut like it hit me so deep i felt like i was feeling that shit you know atlas is just the most <laughs> precious character ever he deserves all the happiness in the world i just i love him so much he's so thoughtful and sweet and just caring for her even though he's homeless when he's a teenager and he's just he cares so much about her oh my god it's like the saddest thing ever and I I love him. I love Atlas so much. This book will always be one of my favorites because of Atlas. He's just great. And like, how cool of a name is that? I love that. Atlas. It's so cool. Oh, I love this book. I love it. I love it. And the number one book on my list, which you probably have already guessed because I talk about it literally every single video, is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This is my favorite book of all time, y'all. It's my favorite book of all time. It follows this boy named Henry. These aliens abduct him and they say the world's coming to an end and they say you have the power to stop it though if you push this button, but he doesn't know if the world is worth saving anymore because his boyfriend Jesse recently killed himself and now he's freaking depressed as hell because now he's like, well, what's the point of saving the world when 
when Jesse doesn't even want to live in this world. He meets this boy named Diego in his school who's had a troubled past and Diego helps him basically rediscover the meaning of life. Like that's the best way I know how to say it. He just helps him discover what's so great about the world again. Most beautiful story I've ever read. It's very depressing and very dark at times but it's so beautiful and it has such a positive message at the end and I cry so much every time I read it. Henry is like my favorite. Just read the first chapter. If you're considering maybe reading this book, just read the first chapter and I promise you, you'll be hooked and interested right away because the first chapter is one of the best first chapters I've ever read. It's the best. I love it. Those are all of my all-time favorite books. I would love to know, like, what do you consider to be your favorite books of all time? Out of all these books that I mentioned, which ones are your favorites? I mean, do you- have you read all of these books that I've mentioned or some of them? I want to know which ones you like or which ones you don't like. Talk about it in the comments and thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>